Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute privilege to be here with uh, two visionaries today and Is Don. Turned off? Yeah. And Don, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for your lesson that you gave us today, but above all for maybe giving us uh, backstage access to the future. Uh, again, a lesson that we can certainly carry with us, and I hope it inspired uh, many of you. You mentioned one very important issue, which was Geneva as a center of trust. And today we want to, during this uh, short debate, we want to uh, dive a little bit deeper into how Geneva can become an international blockchain hub. And uh, I'd like to start with Carlos, actually, give you a, a little bit of a break. Um, Carlos, you have dedicated the last 20 uh, years of your life to your company. Uh, before that, you have just created the Oyster Foundation. And before that, you have dedicated almost two decades to security in the UN context. Uh, you have worked with, uh, I think, almost every brand in the UN uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, from UNCTAD, the ITC, WTO, World Bank, UNDP, um, always with one single focus to make the internet a safer place. And you are today dedicated to making the internet, IoT platforms, and artificial intelligence a safer place. Now, during your decades here in Geneva, unfortunately, you have also seen the birth of the World Wide Web here, but you have witnessed that Geneva actually got very little out of it. You have also seen the rise of the Mobile World Congress, and you have seen its departure. We're now at a key turning point on the blockchain revolution, so how do you think can Geneva secure his place? Thank you very much, Hans. And first of all, I would like to congratulate again Don. Don and I, we are working together for over four years now. We met in Davos. Um, today we have announced a partnership between BRI and Wiseki to build those centers of excellency, uh, which are going to be very much focused on integrating blockchain uh, facilities and, and practices and experience around the world into a way that is collaboratively, means everybody can share. We also have here one way, which is going to be uh, this afternoon uh, covering, which is the blockchain guru in China, which we are also working with him. And he brought a huge delegation of Chinese today here in this meeting, also with intention to integrate China in what Don and I, we are doing on the Blockchain Research Institute. And and the final objective, as you say, Hans, is to really uh, make Geneva the, uh, and he say the word, I mean, it was not even said by me this morning, by the uh, the Trust Protocol Hub. Uh, and, and why Geneva and why Trust Protocol? So first of all, Hans say, we, we invented the World Wide Web. Uh, Mr. Hensler uh, was actually the first person in the any government that, that uh, 16 years ago, position Geneva as the first e-voting city in the world. Actually, we voted online. Even before the blockchain, we used a strong authentication, dual factor authentication to vote. CERN, obviously, as you all know, is here in Geneva. And Geneva has uh, all the uh, international organizations that they are working on the standards. ITU defines the standards on the internet, uh, G4, G5, U uh, uh, UMTS, uh, uh, GDPR now being integrated into telecommunication. We have WHO, that is the uh, focal point for all the data on health. We have WIPO for intellectual property data. Uh, we have the uh, OMC, WTO for trade uh, re regulation. So Geneva is, uh, as I say in the press the other day, is an is oil fill of data. And data needs blockchain, and blockchain need, needs data, and AI needs aggregation of all of that. So the, the vision is very clear. I don't think, to be honest, and I've been all over the world with, with Don, and, and he has been all over the world as well, uh, introducing blockchain. I don't think you have any other city in the world that has the DNA of Geneva. The only problem of, of Geneva, which is not only Geneva, is, is the problem of the uh, evolution of the web is that uh, before it was very hard to extract that data and make these people cooperating between themselves. They were kind of silos. And, and this is why the Internet 2 or the Internet 1, the Web 1, has not been expanded. In the, in the uh, Web 2 or Internet 2, 
we are bringing now three other elements which are going to be uh, radical for changing that. One is a strong digital I identities, identification, and we're going to cover that in a minute, how digital identities are becoming now mainstream, and how digital identities can help people and processes, uh, IoT devices and everything to have a presence on the internet. So we are connecting 50 billion devices to the internet. So that is, creates the ecosystem. The second thing is the trust. Geneva is one of the most trusted cities in the world, not because the city is trusted, it's because trust is negotiated here. Every time you have a, a settlement, people come into Geneva to solve the problem. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it has a DNA of trust. Uh, DNA of trust has been reinforced by the private banks uh, as, as we pro provide services to customers all over the world. We protect their privacy, we protect their data, and we protect their money, which at the end of the day is the final uh, asset that a person would like to protect. And, and then we have the uh, international organizations, then they have the standardization. So Geneva has all the assets to become, as Don say, the trust protocol hub. Another important thing is that the blockchain is not trusted. One of the problems of the blockchain is the trust, because the cryptographic layer of the, of the blockchain is not based on any cryptographic root of trust. And this is where YSK comes in. Wiseki was the first cryptographic root of trust company in the world with VeriSign uh, 20 years ago. Or root of trust has been downloaded 3.6 billion times. So we are in all browsers of the world. Our uh, identities are now connected to the IoT devices. And as you probably know, Wiseki acquired uh, two years ago a microprocessor company, which is a French company, which now allows us to put our digital identities into objects as well. So all those objects, all these identities, now they are talking to a blockchain. And Wiseki has injected already $200 million on the Geneva economy. And we are invested $50 million more to to really make Geneva the center of excellency for trust delegation on the blockchain. Thank you very much, Carlos. I have a follow-up question for you. I think you could say that uh, data is the new oil. And uh, uh, if data is the new oil, uh, social media is probably the new drug scene. Mm -hmm. And you had the new what? The new drug scene. And you <laughs> had alluded earlier today to the importance of uh, assets coming back to the individuals uh, and not uh, being where they are today. But I would like to follow up just quickly with you, Carlos, on the blockchain centers of excellence. And then maybe you don't can say a word about those two, because we're announcing it today here in Geneva to create one. Uh, in addition to the ones that we're creating in, uh, in Argentina, that we have created in India and in Rwanda and in New York. And uh, maybe you can uh, elaborate a little bit on the blockchain centers of excellence. So uh, as, as Don explained, BRI is, is an uh, amazing uh, IP gathering. I mean, uh, companies and they are a member of the uh, BRI benefit from the IP of all the companies and they are a member of the BRI. And, and Don's vision and Alex's vision uh, guide us towards what is going to be really the next thing happening. I, I just say, always say that Don, when, when I was working in the UN, his book, Digital Economy, was, was the book everybody read uh, at that time because he was our hero, he was our visionary. So he continues to be, and he's seen the future in an unprecedented way. So um, the, the center of excellency is the laboratory. I mean, BRI is the standards, uh, IP, and then center of excellences are becoming laboratories where companies bring their applications. Outside, you have already a small center of excellency of blockchain because you have already many applications that are going to be available for everybody to see. So it becomes the laboratory where those IPs can be converted into products. One of the problem of the blockchain is that we don't see the blockchain. The blockchain is uh, ubiquitous, but it's, it's transparent. We only see the benefits of the blockchain, but not the blockchain itself. So those center of excellency will be a window to, to really see the blockchain, how it works. Uh, also demystify because the blockchain is not always everything. Blockchain has a role, and we have to be very uh, cautious that we are not giving blockchain things that the blockchain doesn't do. There's other elements like big data, like artificial intelligence, like deep tech, like cryptography roots, then they are not related necessarily with the blockchain. So all those elements, when they are compiled together on those centers of excellency, creates a lot of wealth of knowledge, knowledge transfer, uh, innovation, and obviously investment community can inspire themselves on those center of excellency to, to invest in the new startups or companies that they are going to be providing uh, this kind of next generation technology. Don, do you like to add anything to the blockchain centers of excellence? Well, first of all, <laughs> that you live in Geneva. You know this place a lot better than I do, and that was a tour de force, so thank you. I have nothing to say. No, that's, <laughs> I've never said that before, and that was not true. But um, first of all, there are, there are more questions than answers when it comes to all of this. 
And there are a lot of big challenges. How do we scale? Um, criminals use this technology. Of course, criminals are always the first to adopt any exciting new technology, whether it's the flip phone or the automobile or whatever. Um, but, uh, and just on that one, uh, really smart law enforcement people that I talk to really like this technology because it's way better than cash. Um, if you and I start doing a bunch of transactions, it's not known who you and I are, but there's metadata saying that we're doing a lot of stuff together. You don't have that with cash, and cash is the foundation of organized crime, the drug industry, terrorism, all kinds of other things. Um, but maybe governments will try and stifle it. Maybe, maybe, there's a long list of, of big, tough issues. And um, what I wanted to say was that we always put these in one of two boxes. Box number one, reason why this technology is a bad idea, it's not gonna work and therefore we shouldn't do it. Box number two, implementation challenges. And so far everything is in box uh, number two, but there are a lot of these. So two years ago we created the BRI, the Blockchain Research Institute. It's based in Toronto, but it's now um, extending out around the world, and we have 104 projects underway looking at the strategic implementation challenges of this uh, technology. And with the partnership with WiseKey, we're going to build these blockchain centers of excellence around the world where a lot of this IP that we've created will be taken into the public domain and made available to that region through the center of excellence. So many uh, people in Geneva will now be able to get access to the millions of dollars of research that we've been doing. And the other thing I'll just mention is that we also hope that as part of this, um, uh, big financial institutions, big global institutions, and other companies in Geneva, including uh, the local government, will become members of the Blockchain Research Institute so they can participate more closely closely with us in defining this research and in executing it. So if you want to know more about that, it's just blockchainresearchinstitute.org and uh, send us a note there and we'll, we'll uh, be delighted to talk to you. Thank you, Don. Um, I'd like to deep dive a little bit more. You mentioned Zug and Zurich uh, before. Uh, so we have our competitiveness even within the small market that we're here. You advise governments, you are in constant interaction with world leaders. What would be your recommendation for Geneva to become the blockchain hub? Well, I think I went through the list of the kinds of things you need to do. You need thought leadership. You're going to get it now, overnight almost, through this uh, center of excellence here. Uh, you need the banks to be innovating, and some are in Geneva, some aren't. You need government to do this. And it's not just about regulation, but which is a, a tough thing. I mean, it, it's a tough time to be a regulator because you have the irresistible force of this technology to create an innovation economy meeting the immovable object of, of public expectations that government ought to protect investors and protect consumers and so on. And most regulators don't have it right. From my point of view, you could get it right. There's a good way to balance that. A real starting point is to understand that not every token is the security. <laughs> Regulators all around the world, they have a hammer and they, they think everything is a nail and they just go around banging on things. Um, and that's not the right uh, way to approach this. So that's a really important thing. Um, one of the most important things governments can do is be a model user. Just use the technology yourselves. Become a next generation government like um, like Dubai is, is uh, trying to do, or other countries or jurisdictions in the world. And governments can also, um, through various mechanisms, support the development of this technology. Like in Canada, um, in, a, in our institute, we have the central bank, the federal government, the Ontario government, and the city of Toronto, all that are members of the institute. And they're benefiting a lot, but it's also helping them get exposure to this technology. And, and what it could do. You need talent, gotta find the uh, elite talent. The way to do that is to have jobs and also to have the universities integrating this stuff into, um, into the programming. One thing, I, I, it's not yet public, but I'll say it today. On March the 23rd, 
um, we're announcing a MOOC, a massively online open courseware program of full, four full courses being done in partnership with INSEAD and Coursera. And that's going to be available to everybody uh, uh, in the world. So that's a, uh, another way of fast tracking this. All, ultimately, it all comes down to leadership. See, because this is a new paradigm. And you know the, the idea. Paradigm's a mental model. They put boundaries around what we think. They constrain our actions. And they're often based on assumptions that are so strong we don't know that they're there, right? The Earth is at the center of the universe. That was a paradigm for millennia. Um, Geneva was consumed by the paradigm of the bipolar world. The big problem in the world is communism. Um, the purpose of computing is to automate existing business processes. The internet is about information. And uh, something can come along in art, science, culture, technology, whatever, that causes a shift to occur. And when that happens, you get a crisis of leadership. Vested interests fight against change, and leaders of old paradigms have great difficulty embracing the new. So my appeal to everybody is that leadership doesn't necessarily come from the top, although there are, there are a lot of CEOs and uh, senior public uh, uh, people here. Leadership can come from anywhere, and it's each of our personal opportunity if we will it. So that's the answer to the question. You've got to look deep within yourself. Because leadership is not the opportunity of the person sitting next to you. It's your opportunity if you, if you want to do this. Thank you, Don. Uh, Carlos, as a, I think we can say, your je ne vois, um, your concrete recommendations for Geneva. Yeah, so as I said, there is a clear roadmap. I mean, uh, uh, Geneva, we lost, uh, I remember 25 years ago when the web was invented here, Tim Bans Lee wanted to stay in Geneva. He was raising money in Geneva to develop the web in Geneva. And at that time, we didn't have the vision to keep uh, Tim Bans Lee and the web in Geneva. He went to MIT, and MIT offered him the uh, possibility to be on the uh, MIT, uh, MIT lab. I imagine if uh, Tim Bans Lee will have stayed in Geneva, the web will have become a totally different thing. Uh, we are we are in a in a situation where now you have ten trillion dollar company sitting on the web and the invention was done in Geneva. Facebook without the web will not exist. Uh, Amazon without the web will not exist. And those companies, all of them, they are reaching nearly one, one trillion dollar valuation. So, so we are now on the same phase here. Uh, 25 years later, there is an internet too. Uh, that we have the same asset, we have the same leadership. There is a lot of leadership here in Geneva. Now what we need to do is to have a laser view on this rather, rather than a rainbow view on this. And, and, and put together, and this is where I think uh, Mr. Mambre with his uh, vision and, and Mr. Hensler to create a blockchain Congress here in Geneva. That, that's the first step. You, you need a very high quality event that is internationally recognized and can roadshow around the world, can go to China, can go to the US and, and show the Geneva flag. And, and being able, uh, we have everything, as, as Mr. Odier said just before, we have the money, we have the legislations, we have the innovation, we have the EPFL in Lausanne, the EPFZ in Zurich. Uh, Geneva is, uh, by the way, Switzerland is becoming and is recognized international, a crypto country. Uh, Chinese now, when they talk about Geneva, they call us the crypto country. So, so let's, let's bring the next one ten trillion dollar economy to Geneva and Switzerland by not making the same mistakes we made last year. Actually. I am going to be organizing in Davos um, a roundtable uh, Wednesday where I am bringing also uh, another architect helping us in Geneva, which is Brad Smith. Brad Smith is the uh, president of Microsoft, and Brad and I, we are going to be announcing the Tech Accord in Davos. And, and Brad is actually creating the Geneva Convention on Cybersecurity. So that means that we are using the know-how of Geneva of the past on the Geneva Conventions on Nuclear Weapons, and we are applying the same principles to cybersecurity on which companies will not use their technology to attack each other and will not use their technologies to attack governments. So uh, all that is being branded Geneva. Uh, and I think with, uh, with the help of uh, this Congress and the, the amazing vi vision of Don and his network internationally, or friends from China, one way and others, next year we're going to have a much bigger event, a much bigger prog prog program, a, a 
a lot of companies outside showing what Geneva can do. And if we continue on that, uh, on that path, the blockchain Congress will become as big as Telecom was one day, as, as you remember, Claude, uh, and we will be able to show our leadership once again to the world. So this is when it's critical for that, and I am very happy, and I welcome, uh, the, uh, really uh, thanks the organizers to, to, to have the inspiration to do it. Thank you very much. I think we're out of time. I would like a big round of applause for Don and Carlos, two great visionaries. Thank you very much. <laughs>